Hello and good day, everybody. This is Kyla. And today on The State of Health, we're looking at the effects of apixaben for stroke prevention in subclinical atrial fibrillation. The State of Health is a semi-weekly podcast and publication where we talk about the most important news and research in medicine and healthcare. Go to stateofhealth.care for more information about our YouTube, newsletter, and publication. Welcome back to The State of Health. Let's dive into a little background before we delve into today's topic. Atrial fibrillation, typically diagnosed by means of electrocardiography in patients with symptoms, is a leading cause of stroke, particularly among older persons. Vitamin K antagonists and direct-acting oral anticoagulants have been shown to reduce the risk of stroke among patients with clinical atrial fibrillation, albeit with an increased risk of bleeding. Approximately 20 years ago, pacemakers and implantable cardioverter defibrillators capable of continuously detecting and characterizing atrial arrhythmias were introduced. It was quickly noted that short episodes of asymptomatic atrial fibrillation were common, even in patients with no other evidence of clinical atrial fibrillation. This led to the term subclinical atrial fibrillation, a condition that is not readily diagnosed by standard clinical means, but discovered only with the use of long-term, continuous cardiac rhythm monitoring by an implanted cardiac pacemaker or defibrillator. Subclinical atrial fibrillation was found in more than one-third of older patients with hypertension who had received a pacemaker and was associated with an increased risk of ischemic stroke or systemic embolism. However, the role of oral anticoagulation in the management of subclinical atrial fibrillation remains uncertain, given the bleeding risk associated with oral anticoagulants, particularly among older persons. That's where apixaban comes in. Apixaban is a direct-acting oral anticoagulant that has shown to have an excellent risk-benefit profile for stroke prevention among patients with clinical atrial fibrillation. The apixaban for the reduction of thromboembolism in patients with device-detected subclinical atrial fibrillation trial, also known as the Atresia trial, was thus designed to determine whether apixaban would result in a lower risk of stroke or systemic embolism than aspirin, with an acceptably low risk of major bleeding among patients with risk factors for stroke who also had subclinical atrial fibrillation detected by a pacemaker, defibrillator, or implantable cardiac monitor. The trial included patients with subclinical atrial fibrillation lasting 6 minutes to 24 hours. It was a double-blind, double-dummy design in which patients were randomly assigned to receive either apixaban or aspirin. The trial medication was discontinued, and anticoagulation started if subclinical atrial fibrillation lasting more than 24 hours or clinical atrial fibrillation developed. The results of the trial were quite revealing. A total of 4,012 patients were included in the trial. The patients were on average 76.8 years old, and 36.1% of the patients were women. After a mean follow-up of 3.5 years, stroke or systemic embolism occurred in 55 patients in the apixaban group, compared to 86 patients in the aspirin group. This showed that apixaban resulted in a lower risk of stroke or systemic embolism than aspirin. However, it's worth noting that the rate of major bleeding was higher in the apixaban group compared to the aspirin group. Fatal bleeding occurred in five patients in the apixaban group and eight patients in the aspirin group. So what's the bottom line here? The Artesia trial has shed significant light on the efficacy of apixaban in managing subclinical atrial fibrillation. Among patients experiencing episodes of subclinical atrial fibrillation and carrying risk factors for stroke, the trial showed that the risk of stroke or systemic embolism was lower by 37% with apixaban as compared to aspirin. Moreover, the risk of disabling or fatal stroke was lower by 49%. These results are supported by the intention-to-treat analysis, underlining the impressive preventive role of apixaban against stroke in this patient population. However, one must not ignore the increased risk of major bleeding by a factor of 1.8 in the apixaban group as compared with the aspirin group. In the quest to assess the clinical benefit of apixaban therapy in patients with subclinical atrial fibrillation, it is paramount to weigh both the benefits and risks, Apixaban resulted in 31 fewer cases of stroke or systemic embolism as compared to aspirin, albeit at the cost of 39 more major bleeding events. Importantly, however, strokes involve permanent loss of brain tissue, while major bleeding is largely reversible, with most patients experiencing a complete recovery. In comparison to the NOAA AFNET-6 trial, which was prematurely terminated for futility, the Artesia trial provides promising results. Despite the increased risk of major bleeding, the considerably greater severity of the stroke events prevented than the bleeding events caused suggests a potential shift in the management of subclinical atrial fibrillation. These findings could have a profound impact on healthcare, particularly in the area of stroke prevention.
With the rise in the use of implanted and wearable cardiac monitors, the ability to detect subclinical atrial fibrillation in patients at increased risk for stroke is increasing. However, the results of the Artesia trial must be interpreted with caution, as they apply directly only to patients who are already at increased risk for stroke in whom subclinical atrial fibrillation is detected by an implanted device. In summary, the Artesia trial found apixaban to be effective in reducing the risk of stroke or systemic embolism in patients with subclinical atrial fibrillation, and despite a higher risk of major bleeding. The severity of stroke events prevented outweighs the severity of bleeding events caused by the drug. This could potentially revolutionize the way we approach the management of subclinical atrial fibrillation in patients with a high risk of stroke. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's State of Health. If you enjoyed this, please do me such a huge favor. Click those like and subscribe buttons, and if you're listening as a podcast, go consider leaving a review or a five-star rating. Don't forget to check out stateofhealth.care for more relevant medical news and content. Until next time, keep your curiosity peaked and your stethoscope close.